Hello everyone. So I'm Dr. Vimal. So the topic that we are going to see for today is sutures and suturing. So sutures we would have already seen partially in exodontia. So in detail we are going to see about sutures, types of sutures, its classifications and its implications and what are the sutures, when, where to use. So all these in relation to neat questions we are going to discuss. All right. So let's get into the topic. So sutures. Suture classification is the first and foremost thing that we are going to see in this topic where sutures are generally classified into absorbable and non-absorbable and depending on the number of filaments it is classified into monofilament or multifilament that is whether it's a single or a braided filament and depending on the coating there are special coating materials which is applied over these threads so upon it it is classified into coated or non-coated and then by size this is by the diameter or the thickness of the thread so basically let's get into the detail of the classification in absorbable we have natural and synthetic again in non-absorbable we have natural metallic and synthetic and then as we have already seen monofilament multifilament these are all present in both absorbable as well as in non-absorbable so all these are intermixed and based on separate it is also classified so let's get into the details. Let's see non-absorbable sutures and how are they classified. It is surgical silk, cotton or linen and then polyamides which are nylon and these are basically monofilament and then polyesters which come as terylene and dacron which are multifilament basically and they are basically coated. So coating is of two types. One is teflon and next is polybutanate. Teflon generally undergoes flaking during sterilization procedures and during uh, suturing into deep acidic tissues. So these days polybutanate is used as a coating material. Next is polypropylene. This under this we have proline which is a monofilament again. These are good for deeper and uh, heavier tissues in cases of suturing. And the last is stainless steel. So this is comes under metallic. So these are the types of non-absorbable sutures. So let's see the next absorbable sutures. Under absorbable sutures, we have natural absorbable sutures like surgical gut. This is taken from the gut of cattle. So these are uh, sterilized and then are used for suturing. So these are natural polymer of amino acids, mostly made up of collagen. So here we can expect questions what is, what is a surgical gut made up of collagen, amino acids or any other components which they can be uh, specified and they can ask you an answer. So it is a polymer of amino acids mostly collagen 99% it is made up of collagen. Next is synthetic absorbable sutures. In this we can separate it into multifilament and monofilament. So in this multifilament first we are going to see polyglycolic acid it is a chain of glycolic acid poly multiple glycolic acid chains next is polygalactin so in this it has got a lactic acid chain along with a glycolic acid in one is to nine parts so here also questions can be expected how many parts this is mixed in next is vicryl plus and vicryl rapid so by the name what is vicryl plus so vicryl is generally what is polygalactin is called as vicryl but in vicryl plus what do you mean is it has got a triclosan coating so it is the only and the most effective used in places where there is infection or in cases where we are expecting infection generally this is used in less smaller number or lesser number values less than 6 to uh, 8 mm diameter in cardiology and in intestinal sutures next is vicryl rapid this is polygalactin 19 which is coated but this has got a special property which rapidly dissolves in the cavity so this is called as vicryl rapid so by the name we can derive the same so these are all multifilament so far we have seen so the next we are going to see is monofilament in monofilament we have monocryl and polydioxane in this monocryl it is a polyglycaprone which is 25 and it's a monofilament these are generally used for places where we do not uh, want multifilament because multifilament we have a disadvantage of absorbing the uh, materials or absorbing the fluids in the cavity or the space which will harbor 
uh, infection in the later stage. So these monofilaments are used. Next is polydioxane, which is PDS. That is nothing but polydioxane monofilament 1 and 2 varieties. So these are just advancements and the next next types of material which are evolved naturally. So we have seen multifilament and monofilament. All these sutures are either sterilized by gamma radiation or by ethylene dioxide. So in this again we can expect a question, how are suture materials sterilized? Either one of these will be given. So ethylene oxide is used in certain materials where there is not much leaching. So gamma radiation causes a little bit of flaking. So depending on the material, the sterilization is deferred. Next, let's see a small question. What it is, which of the following materials is not an absorbable suture? Again, which of the following materials is not an absorbable suture? And the options given to us are silk, chromic catgut, polygalactin, monocryl. So let's see, the question is absorbable suture, which is not. So in that case, we have chromic catgut, which is an absorbable suture, polygalactin, which is nothing other than vicryl, that is a absorbable suture, monocryl, as I have seen said, is also a absorbable suture. Silk, it might look uh, easy to accept silk as an absorbable, but it takes a very long span. So in that case, it is a, not a natural form for our body. So it is a non-absorbable suture. So in this, this is the correct answer. So we should also know one more important point in this. Generally, how do we say absorbable? How does it get absorbed in our body? In cases of a natural polymer, what happens in our body is it gets absorbed by a process of enzymatic digestion of proteolytic enzymes derived by lysozymes contained within the polymorphs and macrophages. Basically, what they are trying to say is this polymorphs and macrophages actually eat up this material by proteolytic enzymes releasing uh, proteolytic enzymes like lysosomes, lysozymes. All right. So in cases of synthetic material, how does it get absorbed is that it causes br breaking of the hydrolysis. So this is a separate process of breakage and this is a separate process. So natural is absorbed and dissolved by proteolytic enzymes from polymorphs and macrophages and in synthetic, the absorbable sutures, the linkage is broken by hydrolysis. So this can also be asked in questions stating a kind of material. So we have already seen a classification, choosing a material from the classification, they might mention the thread or the material and they would ask how does it get absorbed in the body or disintegrated in the body. So accordingly, if it's a natural polymer, generally natural polymer is nothing but we have surgical gut. So that only comes under this column. So every other thing will come under synthetic column. So this is the way of absorption of these suture materials. So the next, let's see, now we've seen about the suture thread material. Now we need to see about the suture needle. So what are these parts of a needle? The needle has got a needle point, a needle eye and the body. So as every other material or an instrument, it has got a parts of it. And there are two types of uh, hooking a needle to the thread. So it is either swaged or it is a normal by tying it. So this is the difference. This is a swaged needle and this is a tied needle. So we see there is a loop here and here there is no loop where the thread is directly merged with the needle. So this as it goes at own advantages and disadvantages where the swage needle is less traumatic. So there can be questions relating to which, which is less traumatic and they can give you options or they can even give you picture uh, diagrammatic representations and then ask you which is a swaged and which is a normal needle. So let's see what are the types of needles and its shapes. So we have several shapes starting from a straight needle to a semi and to one fourth, three circle, three eighth, half circle, five eighth and compound curvature. Generally we use a half serve and a compound curvature in cases of the preferences of the surgical site. So these are the types and this is more important where whether it is a conventional cutting needle or whether it is a micro point reverse cutting or the tapered surgical needle, either a taper or a blunt. So every, every needle has got its own purpose. So let's see one by one, what is a conventional cutting needle? It has got, if we take a dissection of a needle, this is the internal dissection. 
if this is a needle so the cutting edge is comes inside the needle so this is the cutting edge so this is a conventional cutting needle what is a reverse cutting needle it has got a reverse cut that is the sharper end that is the cutting end is on the opposite side and then there's a taper cut surgical needle where the point is cut all all the sides are cutting sides where all the three sides one two three all the three sides are cutting edge so as i've already said before depends on the surgical site and the tissue that the surgical needles are used on and then the next will be a taper this is generally used in a the cross section is generally a point blank circle where this is generally used in internal organs which does not have much resistance to needle poking so and the last is blunt needle the tip of the needle is blunt this is used in visceral or visceral organs so internal organs basically for these kinds of suturing which does not need much effort and which are tissues which are very soft in nature so these are the types of needles and these are the types and how it is cut and let's see what are the principles of suturing this is very important so we let's see by point all right so the needle should be grasped at approximately one third the distance of the eye and two third from the point so for example so if this is the thread your needle holder should hold approximately two third uh, from the point and one third from the eye of the needle so this is how your needle holder is held next a needle should enter the tissues perpendicular to the tissue surface so if this is the tissue which is to be sutured the flap end or a tissue end which has to be sutured and this is the underlying bone it has to enter perpendicular it cannot enter in a diagonal manner so this is correct so a needle should be passed through the tissues along its curve so we cannot take the needle and pass it through straight so the needle is curved in a curved needle that is generally used in an intraoral tissues we have to put the a uh, needle along the curve so we have to rotate the needle not pull the needle so this is what they are trying to mean by the needle should be passed through the tissues along its curve and why should we put the tissues perpendicular uh, needle perpendicular to the tissue surface is that so that we do not cut and we have the complete bulk of the tissue which is been attached to the other side of the uh, membrane or the tissue the suture should be passed at equal depth and distance from the incision on both sides so if these are the two ends of a tissue which has to be sutured so if there is 1 mm of gap between the needle holder and the needle so this has to pass through the same way here at the 1 mm gap so this has to be equidistant so this has to be maintained so that they have a even suture and the needle passes always passes from the movable tissue to the fixed tissues generally if we elevate a flap if there is a flap like this and we are elevating a flap uh, one part of the flap is mobile so this is mobile we have elevated this flap so when we are tying it to the adjacent tissue which is tight so this has to come pass through from the movable side to the attached side so that the knot is on the stable segment of the tissue all right so the next point is the needle always passes through the inner thinner tissues to the thicker tissues so like similarly like 
previous point it has to pass from the thinner or the weaker side to the uh, more stable side next point is the needle always passes from a deeper tissue to the superficial tissue so we have to get hold of the deeper tissues if for example we have debrided a site and then we have a tissue which is of uneven thickness the thicker side should be held first and then the thinner side so that we have better stability then tissues must never be closed under tension undermining the tissues must be done prior to suturing in such cases so if there is a tension if there is not adequate uh, space for the tissues to move and get tightened we are not supposed to tighten it with stress so if there is an eventual gap between the two flaps that we have created we need to close the flap by debriding and or undermining the tissues and then bring it closer together so this will uh, create tension so that in future it will cause wound dehiscence next the the suture should be tried only to approximate the tissues not to blanch too tight the suture is that so the flap gets devoid of blood supply and it leads to necrosis so that is the problem so that is the point which is trying to be mentioned here the suture should not be tried uh to blanch the tissues but it should be tried to only approximate the tissues the next point is the knot should never lie on a incision line so if the knot lies on the incision line it would interrupt wound healing and would cause improper healing or the flap dehiscence again next suture sh should be placed at a greater depth than the distance from incision so as to avert the ma wound margins so what is aversion of a wound if this is the underlying bone and if this is the flap a uh, suture should always try to slightly avert to cause proper closure and will also have uneventful healing of the surgical site next sutures on the skin are usually removed in 5 days and intraoral sutures in 7 days if there is tension while suturing the sutures are to be kept for 10 days so this basically says about the timeline of when to remove the sutures basically in oral cavity we have good blood supply and rich blood supply so in this cases we can remove the sutures as early as 5 days but in cases where we have suspicion of infection we have wound dehiscence we are supposed to remove only after 1 week to 10 days so this depends on the surgical site and specific to the patient so let's see what are the types of surgical knots basically whatever types of sutures we use we use a specific types of knots so there are three basic knots that we use there are several other surgeon specific knots which they use on their own uh, expertise so the we are going to see the basic three knots are secure or a square knot this is a standard square or a reef knot so the first diagram explains how a reef knot is the next is the surgeon's knot it's the most common knot what we use it has a double throw and and a single throw so this is a surgeon's knot the first throw is a double throw and next is the single throw that is a surgeon's knot then a granny's knot or a slip knot so this is the last knot and then let's see what are the types of suturing techniques now suturing techniques we have several suturing techniques this is all independent of the surgical site and the need for wound closure in which aspect like if the wound is huge if the flaps are not approximating well and if in cases of a skin or an intraoral uh, structure or whatever it is the, depending on the site and depending on the need of the suture so we have different types let's see one by one first one is an interrupted suture it is the basic simple interrupted suture or it's also called as a sling suture so it just as the knot from both the uh, sides of the tissues next is a continuous in cases of long uh, incision lines where the suture has to be continued in one single go and where we do not expect much of a wound gaping we can give this continuous suture or it's also called as continuous over and over suture next is continuous locking suture in places where we expect a wound dehiscence or where there is more wound tension we can give this continuous locking suture where the continuous locking happens 
for each and every knot and the, so that even if the thread gets dissolved at one point, the complete suture is not loosened. So the next is mattress sutures. What is a mattress sutures? It goes for, uh, twice against the same tissue so that we have tight closure and averted closure. In this, we have two types. One is vertical mattress. Next is horizontal mattress. Horizontal mattress where the tissues, we take the bite twice on the horizontal aspect that is parallel to the suture line, uh, parallel to the suture line, yes. And then in vertical mattress, we take the knots in the same uh, perpendicular to the suture knots. So we will see the images of the same. In next is figure of eight suture and then subcuticular sutures. Figure of eight by the name, it, the movement of the sutures goes in the direction of eight. So it takes uh, tissues from both the sides in a diagonal pattern. Next is subcuticular sutures. This basically hence the sutures in subcuticular level. Basically it is applied in uh, aesthetic zones where we need to have complete closure with less uh, aesthetic revealing. So in this cases, we are using subcuticular sutures. So let's see a little bit in detail. So let's see the diagrammatic representation, how a sutures, are, how are these different sutures are made. All right. So I've got some several diagrams. So questions can also arise like these. They can give you a picture or a diagrammatic representation and ask you what type of suture it is. Or they might ask you a uh, uh, what type of suture they might mention and they might give you several different diagrammatic representations to choose from. So let's see. So here, this one here, this is a simple interrupted suture. Here you see individual knots which does not involve the other side. So this is a simple suture from one side to the other and a knot is tied. So simple suture or a simple interrupted suture or a sling suture. So it's just a sling around both the tissues. Next, let's see this. So by this diagram, we can understand it goes in a zigzag diagonal pattern. So what have I said? If it goes in a diagonal, in a swing motion of eight. So this is a figure of eight suture. So let's get to the middle of the picture in this we see there is a simple interrupted, but how is it connected to the next knot? And we see there is a lock there. So one knot is specific and then there's a next knot and there we see a continuous line. So it comes under continuous. Whether it is locking, yes. Can you see the last thread which goes inside the other thread and locks the suture? So this is a continuous locking suture. Okay, now let's get to the left corner. So this has got interrupted sutures. Can you see? We have the sutures pass through the parallel node. So what are these sutures? So this is an horizontal mattress suture. So what is this? The last one, can you see? It passes perpendicular to the line, surgical line, so through and through again. So this is a vertical mattress suture. So this is the difference. So pictorially, we have seen all the sutures. What is the difference? The first one, leave it, it is the same suture. It's a continuous locking suture, which is actually represented how a suture goes in beneath the tissues. So let's see a question relating to the same. Which suture is suitable for tight averted closure of deep wounds? So as I've already mentioned, let's see what are the options given here. From the previous explanation, we'll see what is the answer will be. So the options are simple interrupted, continuous, vertical mattress, figure of it. So what is a simple interrupted? If this is the tissue, so we have a single slot at the knot here. What is a continuous? So if this is the tissue, we have a single lock 
and then it goes again and again so next is if this is a soup, tissues the first bite is farther from the edge of the tissue then it goes again and comes back so this is a vertical mattress and then figure of eight if this is a socket the figure of eight motion goes from this side to this side and switch on. so there's a eight which is seen visibly so this is the figure of eight so what do you think which will be giving you a tight averted closure so the most prominent is vertical mattress sutures as i've already said both the mattress horizontal as well as vertical depending on the surgical site it will uh, be used for tight averted closure all right so mechanical wound closure devices so other than these suturing materials what else are used in these days so we have ligating clips we have surgical staples tissue adhesives so let's see one by one what are ligating clips ligating clips are nothing but strong hemostats which are like clip forms to hold the tissues or the flaps in tight nature so that there is hemostasis which occurs these are generally used to clamp when we you when we elevate a flap and we are having multiple hours of surgery where we need to ligate the complete tissue so that we do not have a bleeding site so generally these are ligating clips this is also uh, one of the recent advancements next is surgical staples this is generally like our staples which goes around both the tissues and staples the tissues together so generally this we can see post uh, c sections and uh, any uh, major surgeries where we does not have much intervening where sutures are not required and it gives a pleasant outlook next is tissue adhesives this is basically got two materials that is n butyl cyanoacrylate and 2 octyl cyanoacrylate these are the two materials this has uh, been asked in uh, one of the regional questions where they have asked mentioned about what is 2 octyl cyanoacrylate and they have given options as as a ligating clip as a tissue adhesive as a surgical staples or they have given as other uh, materials so they would have given several other options and ask you so these tissue adhesives when combined with plasticizer are good tissue adhesives it's just like our tissue glue so this is other name is for tissue adhesives a tissue glue so these two components we need to cyanoacrylate one is n butyl second is 2 octyl cyanoacrylate so these two are the options so we've seen ligating clips surgical staples and tissue adhesives so these are the three next level of suture closure uh, mechanical wound closure devices all right so suture removal now that we've seen what are the types of suture material and suture uh, advancements what are there what are the types of threads what are the needle and how the needles are classified we will see after uh, when do we have to do suture removal skin sutures are usually removed after a 7 to 10 days depending upon the area so as i've already said any suture removal will require proper averted closed margins so by clinical examination we can evaluate it general timeline for a suture removal is 7 to 10 days for an external suture that is on a skin suture mucosal sutures which are actually highly vascularized will require lesser time because the healing is faster so the mucosal sutures are removed between 5 to 7 days even again here we can expect they might give you a clinical situation where the mucosa is sutured and when it has to be removed their options might also include 7 to 10 days but 7 to 10 days is basically for skin sutures where it takes a longer period because of the less vascularity all right so on a whole now we have seen what are sutures what are the types of suture materials what are the suturing techniques and what are the types in briefly we have seen the areas where we need to concentrate are the types of materials and the material qualities and the where what kind of sutures can be used what materials can be used and in cases where type of technique used that is in cases where we need a tight closure 
or we need expect there is going to be a swelling so we need to give a loose suture like a continuous suture so all these are discussed in this topic so we need to get into these topics and revise it again and again so that we are sure of it and generally all these topics are will come in other topics also that is these are all overlapping topics because suture is done in all surgical procedures after every other surgery can occur in trauma it can occur in orthognathic so each and every procedure will have its own uh, types of suturing and as it said surgical site is more governing the type of suturing that we are going to place so we have to concentrate on all these repeated revision will always get you better all the best